torque. What is the equation for torque, Bailey? Ah, the net torque. I agree, the net torque. Ah, oh, that was not helpful. Net torque is equal to derivative of the angular momentum as a function of time. Now, I will point out, Michael, do you have to have these equations memorized at this time? No, right? Because at this time, for test 11, 12, and the next test that we're going to have, you do not have to have them memorized because I do provide you with the equations. When it comes for time for the final exam, Spencer, do you have to have the equations memorized? Yes. Yes. So please just keep that in the back of your mind that you do have to actually memorize all of this stuff. All of the Shut up. Well, the truth is you don't need them for the free response, but you need them for the multiple choice, so you no, need to no. still memorize them. So we don't get an equation sheet on multiple choice, you do not get an equation sheet. All you get is the table of information. Yeah, the table of Hi, guys, what's up? I'm looking for something. Could you look later? Because you're disturbing me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel disturbed. I apologize. Thank you. Uh, so just realize, yes, you do have to have these memorized for the multiple choice yes. section. Yes, we have net torque equals the derivative of angular momentum as a function of time. Dorfstetter, what is the equation for torque? Rf sine theta is one, I agree. What is another equation for torque, Zach? R cross F. Please do not forget that you do need to be able to remember how to do vector, the vector products in the I, J, K with the matrices, etc. When you sum the torques, what do you have to identify? Black. The axis. The axis of rotation, and sometimes you have to identify the objects as well. For example, when you were working on your lab on the first page, you needed to sum, sum the net torque around the axis of rotation of the pulley, but that only included the pulley and the mass hanging. It did not include the sensor, just as an example. We have angular momentum. We have two equations for angular momentum. The Silva, give me both, please. Uh, it is the product of, um, oh, no, no, wait, no, it's moment of inertia times omega. The other one? Um, it's cross product of, I don't know, mass and velocity. Mass and velocity are included in there, but it's, not, it's the something that is important, Zach? Degrees. Um, R cross P. Uh, okay. So, what is the difference between these two equations, Sarah Jane Jones? Um, oh, one is for particles and one is for objects in shape. Which one's which? Uh, the first one's for particles. This one is for particles. This is for rigid objects with shape. Uh, let's see. What is R in these equations? Um, Below Ah, uh, yes, but I'm looking for a description of it. The distance from the axis of rotation to the force. Uh, well, for the torque, it would be to the force. For the angular momentum, it would be to the velocity, the center of mass of the object. Great. Okay, when is angular momentum conserved, Mr. Patel? When it stops in equilibrium. Stuff. It's not very helpful. I don't know exactly why, but it's an equilibrium for that. Equilibrium. Close. John. <coughs> like equals zero. So it's in rotational equilibrium. When the net torque, net external torque, is equal to zero, that's equal to the derivative of the angular momentum as a function of time. Therefore, the sum of the initial angular momentum equals the sum of the final angular momentum. That is conservation of angular momentum. Please remember when you are using this equation that there is an axis of rotation. You are some of the torques about some point. It is common for people to forget that because it comes from the net torque about some external axis or some sort of axis of rotation. So whenever you're using conservation of angular momentum, you need to include that. Please do not forget the 
basic concept that was in your lab, which is that while we have r and we have theta, we have big R, and the sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, where the opposite is the big R, the hypotenuse is the little r, and r sine theta then equals big R. The idea that while the distance between the axis of rotation and the center of mass of the object and the angle, both of those might be changing, the radius is not, and therefore r times the sine of theta is not changing as this object moves up or down. Something that comes up quite often. That finishes chapter 11, chapter 12. Chapter 12 had to do with equilibrium. We had translational and rotational equilibrium. Meg, give me the equations for translational and rotational. Uh, translational with the, the net force is equal to zero. Rotational equilibrium. Uh, you should. The net torque equals zero. We already had identified some of the forces you identify a direction and the objects, some of the torques you identifying the axis of rotation and the objects. What does it mean for the object if the it is in translational equilibrium, for example? Tim, what does that mean? Uh, the acceleration is either zero or the velocity is constant. <laughs> The acceleration is equal to zero, which means the velocity is constant or it's at rest. What does it mean as far as rotational equilibrium then, Loki? Um, it's either rotating where it's not moving at all, or it's rotating at a constant angular velocity. Because the, you, have, you have an angular acceleration equal to zero. Please remember to draw your free body diagrams anytime you are using something like this. We have also the x center of mass, which here on planet Earth is also equal to the position, uh, the x center of gravity. That gave us an opportunity to review those basic concepts and figuring out the position center of mass of an object with shape 